This lecture is entitled The French Baroque Under Louis XIV, or I'm Rich and Powerful, You're Not. Now, art created under Louis XIV deserves its very own lecture because conditions in France when Louis XIV was king were different than they had been with kings that came before him. And the main difference is that with Louis XIV, all power was in his hands. And that might sound a little strange to you because you might think, well, he's a king, of course all power was in his hands. But the difference is that before Louis XIV, kings kind of shared their power um, and shared um, decision making with other important people in France. But with Louis XIV, that went away and literally all power was in his hands. And he gained absolute rule. Absolute rule. And he also ruled by divine right. And that's the idea that God, the divine, has said you have the right to rule. So between these two things, Louis XIV really had a runaway sense of power. All power was in his hands. And so when we take a look at the art created under Louis XIV, or especially art in, created in a, an official capacity, we should keep this in mind. And really everything was created with the idea of, in some way or another, glorifying Louis XIV. Um, so let's take a look at this image on the left, which is a portrait of Louis XIV by an artist known as Iasant Rigaud. Saint Rigaud, and it dates to 1701, and it is a portrait of Louis the Fourteenth. And I think you can see right away this is a really elegant, uh, noble portrait of Louis the Fourteenth, um, and he really his power is emphasized in this painting. And I think you can see that in a few ways. One thing, take a look right here at the sort of front corner of this space. He's elevated a little bit. So he's looking down on us. And of course, that's a very symbolic thing to be looking down on someone. And I think that's kind of what the message of the painting is. I'm rich and powerful, you're not. Um, I, I think it really comes across in this painting. So he's above us. He's also draped in all of this finery. I mean, look at this rich garb that he's wearing. This, you know, you can see the texture of this fur um, and the velvet of the curtain behind him. It's all very elegant. And then, of course, there's a crown over here. So if there was any doubt as to his wealth and status, uh, the objects in this painting put those doubts out of our mind. Another thing that you should notice about this painting is the use of a classical style. And that is the style of art under Louis the Fourteenth. Classical. So you hear Louis the Fourteenth, you should think classical. And we see that in a few ways. I mean, notice there's classical architecture in the background. You can see this pilaster back here with a, a classical capital. You can see the base of a column here, and there's even some relief sculpture in the background, classical style relief sculpture. But also in the style of the painting, uh, the things are very clear and crisp, and there isn't that sort of murky realism that we saw with Caravaggio and his followers in the earlier Baroque. Now, it might help to view this work alongside a work created before Louis' rise to power. <clears throat> so here's uh, Rigaud's portrait of Louis XIV on the left, and this, hopefully you remember, is Simone Vouet, and this is the Toilet of Venus, dating to 1629. And just to refresh your memory, Vouet had moved away from the realism of Caravaggio and the Caravaggisti, and he embraces, again, that more classical style, that classical vein of Baroque art, uh, art 
and this was is classical in its subject matter, right? Because this is Venus here. And we have a very sculptural body. It looks almost like classical sculpture in this figure of Venus. And again, we have that, what I mentioned before, that crisp, clear, concise style. And you can see that has carried on to Rigaud's portrait of Louis XIV. Um, and I mentioned when we discussed Rouet that he was, in a way, a bridge to the future, a, a move beyond the chiaroscuro and the realism of Caravaggio into this more, uh, the style that would prevail later in the century. When we look at art created under Louis XIV, it's really important to consider one of the most important artists from the period, and that artist is uh, you see two of his works on the screen here, and his name is Charles Le Brun. And Le Brun was a real favorite artist of Louis XIV. He led the Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture and sort of helped dictate official accepted painting styles in France. So he is a really, really important figure when we look at the art uh, the art created under Louis the Fourteenth, and he worked in all kinds of media. He was a painter. He was an interior designer. He was an architect. He was a sculptor. So really important in this period in French architecture or French art. And of course, he really pushed that agenda of classical art. And I think you can see right away if you look at this painting up here, which was done by Charles Le Brun, and it's Alexander in Babylon, dates to 1665. Let's write that down. Alexander in Babylon, 1665. Now hopefully right away you can see this is a very classicizing painting. We have classical architecture all over the place people dressed in classical dress. And if you know uh, some of classical history, um, Alexander might ring some bells for you. He was um, a historical figure from the classical world. And this depicts his defeat of an enemy in Babylon and entering into the enemy's city. So this is a classical subject, classical style. Again, we have that crisp, clear style. Um, and even if you take a look, the sort of horizontal emphasis of the story here is a lot like classical sarcophagi or cla classical relief sculpture. So in that way, it's classicizing too. But what, here's Alexander right here entering his enemy's territory. And I said at the beginning that, when, that pretty much all art created under Louis XIV is in some way an attempt to glorify Louis XIV. So how might this painting glorify Louis XIV? Well, you might think this is, you're supposed to see this as sort of an analogy. Um, Louis XIV's greatness parallels Alexander's greatness, and he is certainly this powerful victor. So always a subtext when we're looking at the art created under Louis XIV. And finally, I just wanted to show you one example of architecture because that's very important um, when we look at Louis XIV as well. I mean, consider um, Versailles, for example. And so this, what you're looking at on the right is actually the east front of the Louvre. East front of Louvre. And that was a palace. And it was built around 1667 to 70. And this was Charles Le Brun in collaboration with two other important architects from the time. And their names are Claude Perrault, I'll just write their last names here for you, and Louis Laveau. So they also were involved in working on this East front of the building. Now, I think right away you can see this is a really classical style building. 
We have columns, uh, cornice. Uh, we have a little bit of a temple front here with the columns across the front and the triangular pediment. Um, all these things that hopefully you immediately see as classical here. But this building is really famous because it is considered one of the first expressions of a really distinct French Baroque architecture. And there are a few things that these architects contributed to that. Um, the first thing you should notice is, let's take a look at this section of the building right here. Notice something interesting about the columns. Uh, do you notice anything kind of new here? Hopefully you'll notice the columns are grouped in pairs. And that became a hallmark of French Baroque architecture and is a departure from classicism that we've seen so far. And again, hallmark of French Baroque architecture. Another interesting thing about this building is it's actually a three-story building, but it's constructed in such a way that it looks like one massive imposing story um, on top of this tall podium. And what do you think the effect of that would be? of having one massive story on a tall podium. Well, it's imposing, it's authoritative, um, it has a grandeur to it. And that, of course, is very in line with the goals of Fran Louis XIV and France at this time. So important to keep this stuff in mind, especially as we move forward and uh, take a closer look at the Palace of Versailles. You're going to be taking a tour of that. So keep some of these uh, details in your mind as we move forward and certainly that sense of grandeur and imposing power um, because really at Versailles all of these ideals kind of come to a head and really are taken to new heights. <laughs>